3G customers. Now, it's not been very long since we first launched Honeycomb, but we've managed to get a lot of nice user enhancements into the 3.1 upgrade. Let me show you a couple of them. First, people really like the new task switcher we introduced in Honeycomb. You can see it here. We figured that if switching between a few tasks was good, then switching between more will be even better. So we made it so that you can scroll through to see all of your most recent tasks. Now, remember that Android has true multitasking. So some of these apps may really be running, and some may not. But the user doesn't need to care. This is possible only on Android, because we're using some unique technology that automatically shuts down and restores applications transparently. The system manages resources for you, so you'll never run out of memory, and you'll never be asked to quit in order to launch something else. Next, remember the improved widgets we introduced in Honeycomb? Let's look at the scrolling Gmail widget. That's pretty nice, but what if you get a lot of mail? Well, for that, we're taking widgets to the next level. So as you can see, you can now stretch widgets horizontally or vertically. And if you're a developer and you've already created a scrolling widget for Honeycomb, you can upgrade it to be resizable with just a few lines of XML. In 3.1, we also put a lot of effort into upgrading Android's USB support. Android devices can now act as USB hosts, which means you can now do things like... So that means you can now do things like importing photos directly from your digital camera to your tablet. And because Android is now a USB host, the OS also supports a ridiculous number of USB input devices as well. Keyboards, mice, trackpads, joysticks, game controllers, and more. So here you're about to see uh, Anand play, or rather attempt to play, Cordy using a game controller. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, that was a brave attempt. Um, there's a lot more in 3.1, but let me move on to some other platform news. It turns out that Android 3.1 is not just for tablets. It's also coming to Google TV this summer. This is great news for Google TV users. It's great news for Google TV users, and it gets better. Google TV will also be getting the Android market. So all of you developers, So all of you developers will now be able to create apps for Google TV using exactly the same SDK that you're using for Honeycomb. Consumers who already have a Google TV device will automatically get the update over the air. And there are new Google TV products based on 3.1 coming from Sony, Vizio, Samsung, and Logitech. If you want to hear more about bringing your apps to Google TV, please check out the Google TV session tomorrow here at IO. Okay, let's look a little farther down the road. I'm also happy to announce the next major Android release, Ice Cream Sandwich. And of course, to also debut the most important part of any release, the new logo. <laughs> All right. We're targeting a Q4 launch for Ice Cream Sandwich, and in many ways, this will be our most ambitious release to date. Let me tell you about some of the themes behind this release. First, choice. If I had to pick one word to explain Android's phenomenal growth over the past year, that word would be choice. Consumers really like choices, and with Ice Cream Sandwich, we're going to make them really, really happy. Here's just a small sample of the range of devices that we've powered by Android. So we have phones in every size and shape, phones with keyboards that slide, phones with keyboards that flip, phones with built-in game controllers, Tablets in every size, from 7 inches to 10 inches, even tablets that transform into laptops. And who knows what else is coming. But in the end, we know that high-quality apps are the lifeblood of Android. So our top priority for Ice Cream Sandwich will be to give app developers the tools they need to deliver great experiences on all of these devices. We want one OS that runs everywhere. Let me tell you how we're going to make that happen. 